um, assalamu alaikum and good afternoon to everyone uh, today i welcome you all uh, to world health day to 2020 online session organized by pakistan institute of living and learning uh, in collaboration with uh, manchester global foundation dow university of health sciences global mental health and cultural psychiatry national institute of Cardi cardiovascular diseases and university of glasgow along with a cross project so we'll begin our day with uh, in the name of holy uh, with i would like to request uh, mr umair asim to recite a few verses from the holy quran mr umair a'uz billahi minash shaitanir rajeem بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس قد جاءتكم قد جاءتكم عائزة من ربكم وشفاء لما وشفاء لما في السدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين translation O mankind there has come to you a guidance from your lord and a healing for the diseases in your hearts and for those who believe a guidance and a mercy tarjuma ae logo tumhare parwardigar ki taraf se nasihat aur dilon ki bimariyon ki shifa aur mu'minon ke liye hidayat aur rehmat aa pahunchi hai बिस्मिल्लाहिर्रहमानिर्रहीम Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. and good evening, everybody. Um, it really is a honor and a privilege uh, for me to welcome you all on this important uh, World Heart Day, which is actually celebrated across the world. So I'm I'm welcoming you on behalf of Pakistan Institute of Living and Learning, uh, the Manchester Global Foundation. the across elite across study team and our other uh, collaborators now the theme for this year uh, is use your heart to beat heart disease so some of you may think that what is me uh, a mental health professional uh, doing at a world uh, heart day doing for us as a psychiatrist Uh, as a professor, as a as a as a practicing psychiatrist, for me, when we talk about heart, it's about using your mind. The idea is to to optimize your uh, your mental strengths, your knowledge, um, to 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 use it to optimize your cardiac health, to modify your behaviors, to change um, your behaviors for a better quality of life, not just for now. but for the future as well we do know that cardiovascular diseases and and mental illnesses are amongst the leading causes of of uh, morbidity mortality worldwide <coughs> what is actually quite intriguing that with years of uh, work now we know that there's several links uh, between uh, cardiovascular diseases and mental illnesses and and some work has actually even suggested that both may cause one another so there's a very strong link we also know um that depression and anxiety when present in patients uh, with cardiac diseases are associated with poor 
a health related quality of life and poor outcomes so basically the prognosis is uh, are not that good so keeping this in mind i don't think i'd be wrong to say that mind and heart connection should be on everybody's radar and agenda and if we want to take it forward um uh, for me that, that's 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 a core theme now with this covid pandemic our challenges our tasks are even uh, become more difficult with especially in developing countries with limited access to healthcare resources the main call for this event is to remind people about general well-being of heart how to prevent cardiac illnesses and to make them aware of severity of diseases we'll also have an opportunity uh, to listen from our speakers about the work that we are doing collaboratively across the world we are really i think fortunate to have a very esteemed a very uh, knowledgeable uh, very respected uh, speak uh, panel of speakers uh, we've got professor or taylor and professor nusrat hussain from uk we've got dr mathila farooqi from bangladesh and then uh, professors nabila sumro uh, zainab zade and professor tahir sameer uh, who would be speaking um, at uh, in the next uh, hour uh, giving us sharing their experiences and and um, valuable advices i would want to specially thank uh, pill team for making this tremendous effort of getting uh, all of us together and i also want to thank all of you uh for taking out time towards the end of the day when you've kind of in pakistan when you finished work and others uh, uh in in uk probably who are in their lunch times sitting in and listening to to this so thank you very much uh, uh for being here and i look forward to an uh, an interesting hours discussion and talks to follow thank you samir thank you sir thank you so much for your kind words now i would like to request professor zainab zade a professorial scientist and head of division child and adolescence mental health at pakistan institute of living and learning to please address the audience professor zainab zade thank you very much for the opportunity in the name of allah most beneficial and merciful assalam alaikum and a very good evening to everyone um uh, as this is already been said that uh, today we'll be talking about how thoughts feelings behavior could actually help healing heart issues so my talk would be based on three to four minutes would be based on uh, how psychological interventions could play an important role in helping cardiovascular disease uh, patients uh, dealing with their anxiety and depression so my talk would be based on that but as before the, um, as we all know that uh, the the importance of emotions and feelings in dealing with heart issues in dealing with cardiac issues is something that we need to highlight in today's world uh, why because that plays an important role in helping individuals survive and deal with the issue uh, so keeping this in mind i would first like to start with how sensitive this matter is and uh, what is the what are the facts around that a little sensitive matter uh would start with the idea of uh, this is considered to be the number one cause of death globally and about 71% of deaths are considered to be responsible for cardiovascular diseases earlier it was thought that it's only an elite class problem but aaj ke daur mein we get to know this is not only a sirf elite class ki problem nahi it's about coming from uh, uh from the place where people uh, survive uh at a very low financial uh, the issues that they have very uh, in at a place where they have uh, problems financially so it comes from the place also where poor people are dealing with this type of issue so the the, the statistics helps us understand this that about a big number of people who come from lower socio economic class they also suffer from this issue so but hum kar rahe hain aaj dil ke mamle ki so it's it's about dil da mamla that we'll be discussing today so it's not only about uh, people coming from elite class having this problem but people from low socio economic class suffering from the same issue 
and they're also going through depression and anxiety issues. So facts are here uh, for us to just reflect on. The situation is same in Pakistan as well. Now, next slide, please. So globally, this is number one cause of death. Cardiovascular diseases are considered to be number one cause of death. In Pakistan, also the situation is pretty much the same. बहुत ज़्यादा तादाद हमारे पास जो इस वक्त statistics की यहाँ पर flash है वो ये वाज़े करती है कि ज़्यादातर अमवात पहला नंबर आता है cardiovascular diseases का दिल की बीमारियों का और फिर stroke उसके साथ है. So keeping this in mind. It's important at this stage that we clarify the idea in our mind that this is a sensitive issue which requires our attention from not only the point of view of providing uh, what type of physical support they require, but what type of issues they might come across in this process of taking treatment and availing the services that are available and going through this issue with their families, how this might, might affect their psychological well-being. So globally, it's number one cause of death. In Pakistan, the situation is also the same. This is what the facts and figures and statistics shows us. Can I have next slide, please? Next slide, please. Now, after having this idea very clearly stated that this is uh, first cause of, number one cause of death globally and in Pakistan, and the sensitivity being highlighted, it's very important at this stage that I also uh, talk about a little bit related to the uh, fact that how this issue, this dil ka mamla, is not occurring alone. Ya kele nahi hota. Iski hasasiyat, iski sensitivity zyada is tarah se hai. Ki when the person is dealing with this type of issue, wo just masle se guzarta hai apni family ke saath. There are multi comorbidities happening. Ek se zyada amraz hai jiske saath wo mukabla kar raha hota hai apni family ke saath milkar. दिल की बीमारी दिल का आरजा इंसान को जब पता लगता है कि उसको दिल का मसला हो गया है उसको इस इस बीमारी का मुकाबला करना है तो जिंदगी बदलती ही महसूस होती है लाइफ स्टाइल इज इन 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 द पर्सन माइंड अपेयर्स एज इट हैज चेंज इन अ वे दैट पर्सन स्टार्ट्स फीलिंग एंशियस अबाउट इट कोई भी इंडिविजुअल एंशियस फील करता है डर जाता है फैमिली भी उसके साथ डर जाती है प्रोसेस इज नॉट दैट ईजी विच लीड्स टू लॉट ऑफ स्ट्रेस लाइफ स्टाइल जो हमारे पास इस वक्त मौजूद है उस पर ज्यादातर ये हो रहा होता है कि हम चाहे खुश हैं तो खाते हैं हम परेशान हैं तो खाते हैं हम अफसोस में हैं तो खाते हैं विच लीड्स टू वॉट वेट गेन होता है एंड एन इट लीड्स टू लॉट ऑफ मेनी इशूज विच आर रिलेटेड टू ब्लड प्रेशर बढ़ गया फिर उसकी वजह से दिल के मसाइल पैदा होते हैं जिंदगी आजकल इतनी स्ट्रेसफुल हुई हुई है जिसमें भाग दौड़ सी है मैं एक से दूसरे से आगे जाना चाहता हूँ या कभी कभी परवाह नहीं करते हमारे पास ऐसे लोग भी हैं जो ज्यादातर जब पता भी लगता है किसी बीमारी के बारे में तो द रिजल्ट और द आइडिया इन द माइंड इज दैट देखा जाएगा एक अप्रोच ऐसी होती है लाइफ की एटीट्यूड एक ऐसा कि देखा जाएगा कुछ लोग ऐसे हैं जो बहुत घबरा जाते हैं दे बिकम टू सेंसिटिव टू एंशियस अबाउट इट दे बिकम टू केयरफुल विच रिजल्ट इन दे डिवेलपिंग सेवरल साइकोलॉजिकल इशूज Uh, in which the most uh, popular are anxiety and depression. So multi-morbidity that we see, ek se zyada bimariyan jo cardiovascular diseases ke saath hame nazar aati hai because of the sensitivity of this issue, because of the lifestyle that these people have, because of the uh, workload or the stressors uh, which they have to come across in today's world that leads to uh, they having such type of issues where they feel low, they start having negative thoughts, they become hopeless. Um, they become too sensitive to responses. It becomes difficult for them to continue with their work and the family pressure. So this, um, this all leads to they having an issues which create a lot of uh, psychological well-being problems or challenges for them to deal with and their families to deal with. Now what Phil and the team has done to contribute in this process? We have uh, uh, the, the slide here shows that uh, there is this publication uh, in a very down journal. Uh, this cohort study also states and confirms the same idea. 66% of the 66% of the population, they showed anxiety and depression symptoms uh, uh, and they were having cardiovascular diseases as well. The correlation with this was, uh, in this study also confirms the same idea that this relationship is very uh, evident. तो वो लोग जो कार्डियोवेस्कुलर डिजीज का शिकार पाकिस्तान में स्टडी ने इसको 
की जो पब्लिकेशन हुई एफ की तरफ से उसने इस बात को साबित किया नॉलेज एटीट्यूड एंड प्रैक्टिस टूवर्ड कम्युनिटी रिहेबिलिटेशन एंड मल्टी मोबिलिटी इन पाकिस्तान मिक्सड मेथड स्टडी इज अ स्टडी विद विच इज एन एथिकल रिव्यू सो कीपिंग दिस इन माइंड दैट not only a publication but there is another work which is going on uh, which is in a way a step towards the idea that a multidisciplinary team can help these people fight and heal with cardiac issues and take care of the psychological well being as well is an evidence that when i changes into v illness changes into wellness and psychological interventions are very important to be considered in this process why because when we are talking about heart healing we just cannot ignore how psychological factors especially anxiety depression and the fear that these people have in this problem in this issue uh, that could be taken care by providing them with psychological interventions so baat sirf Professor Zainab Zadi, your mic is mute. Could you please unmute your mic? Thank you, ma'am. I don't know to what point you've been able to listen to me, but I'll continue. I was just quickly talking about this that there is this uh, publication by Pill uh, team, which is a cohort study stating that sixty-six percent. Uh, of cases were reported having the uh, uh, a relationship of anxiety and depression with cardiovascular diseases there is another study under ethical review by pill team uh, which is uh, taking care of community cardiac rehabilitation and multi morbidity related to this in pakistan there is another study uh, which is under process by name of a cross uh, professor uh, tyler would be talking about it uh, in detail in a short while but thodi si baat jo main yahan par दिल का मामले के बारे में थोड़ी सी हाईलाइट कर देना चाहती हूँ कि जो लाइफस्टाइल इख्तियार किया हुआ होता है हमने उसकी वजह से जो मसाइल पैदा हो रहे होते हैं दिल के इश्यूज को हैंडल करने में दैट इफेक्ट्स आर साइकोलॉजिकल वेल बीइंग एंड दैट मेक्स द स्ट्रगल वेरी चैलेंजिंग एंड डिफिकल्ट सो इट्स इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस फैक्ट विच इज बीन हाईलाइटेड इन द्रॉस प्रोजेक्ट एज वेल that psychological interventions with multidisciplinary team could play an important role in assisting and facilitating uh, and uh, helping cardiac patients heal better so bas itni si baat ke sath would like to uh, end my talk uh, ek baat hai na ki uh, jo psychological interventions dete hain wo ek ek tasalli dete hain to help individuals struggling with cardiac problems or issues uh, with the anxiety and depression and that's ki tera lafz e tasalli ko dawa hai jisse ji uthega koi ujda hua benun ko dama so your kind words is the medicine which would actually help a depressed person to be enlightened and to be able to go through in life with better man and across is the best, best example of that so when uh, i is changed into we illness changes into wellness and for this sensitive issue which requires uh, support from other people a multidisciplinary team is required and across is the example of that thank you very much for your attention thank you very much professor zainab zade uh, it was a really great talk uh, i would now request professor tahir sahi sir if you could please unmute your mic professor tahir sahi uh, professor of cardiology director clinical research department director cardiac cath department and intervention program at national institute of cardiovascular diseases may i please request professor tahir sahi to please unmute his mic and address the audience So we are not able to hear you. If you could just check your audio, sir. So your mic is unmute, but your audio settings need to be checked, sir. If you could just uh, unplug and replug your headphones again, sir. इस दरमियान में नहीं तो समीम दूसरी नेक्स्ट टॉक करा लें जब तक प्रोफेसर ताहिर अपना एड्रेस कर कर लेते हैं तो सो अपॉलॉजीज़ फॉर द इनकन्वीनियंस वील मूव ऑन टू ताहिर आप अपना थोड़ा सा माइक बाहर करो जब आपने उसका पिन हिलाया था तो आवाज आनी शुरू हो गई जी
I'd like to request Professor Dr. Nabila Sumro, Director, Institute of Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation, Dow University of Health Sciences, Karachi, Cardiopulmonary Rehab Consultant at National Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases, to please address the audience. Professor Dr. Nabila Sumro. Yes. Um, good evening to all colleagues in Pakistan, and good afternoon to all colleagues in London and. Uh, am I audible? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so good can evening to all of you and uh, thank you so much for providing me the opportunity to share what are we doing here in this part of the world as far as cardiac rehab is concerned. So, uh, I don't know who's controlled the slides are. Can we so currently the cardiac rehabilitation in Pakistan is being practiced as a multidisciplinary service at National Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases and at Cardiovascular Rehab Department of Dar Universities. So just to share that where are we offering cardiopulmonary rehab services currently. Next. So uh, I'm sure now we are all acquainted with the word rehabilitation because uh, rehabilitation word has gone almost in every field of uh, medicine or surgery, whether it's neurological rehabilitation, pediatric, musculoskeletal, and of course, cardiopulmonary rehabilitation has a major role to play because that is by how we can, you know, make any patient with either a cardiac event whether it's a MI or whether it's a cabbage, to we want to just bring, bring them to the optimum uh, physiological, as a professor uh, before me just said, psychological, social, vocational, emotional status. Because you know you have to fix up every part of the puzzle in cardiopulmonary rehab. So actually, cardiac rehabilitation is a medically supervised program that improves the health and well-being of the people it's you have to who have heart issues so uh, briefly uh, it's not a one-man show of course uh, we have to have uh, a lot of people who have to work uh, with the cardiac patient and we have three phases of cardiac rehab phase one is like uh, when you have an acute event when uh, only cardiologists, cardiac physician, therapist are around. And phase two is when you really make a plan and then address all risk factors so that you can prevent subsequent heart events. And then uh, just a brief review of uh, who are important members of the team as far as cardiac rehab is concerned, who revolves around a cardiac patient. Physiatrists, we as rehab physicians, who are called physiatrists, cardiac physician or surgeon, uh, your nurse, nutritionist, social worker, your vocational therapist, your neuropsychologist, um, orthotist, because most of the cardiac patients, they suffer from stroke, per peripheral arterial diseases, occupational therapist who just train them how to be independent in their activities of daily living and who can gradually increase their meds and who can gradually increase their energy levels and daily activities as per meds. And physical therapists, of course, they're very important, uh, again, part of our team. And they work on not only mobility, but the chest therapy and on different aspects of how do we in increase their endurance and their strength and so on. So cardiopulmonary rehab team is very important. Uh, fortunately at Dow and even at NICVD, we are offering a, a multidisciplinary cardiac rehab program, phase one, phase two, and phase three is usually a home program where you tell patient how to monitor their physical activity and their risk factors. Just briefly, I'll take a minute to just highlight that what are the real risk factors nowadays? Uh, last year, we just revised uh, with Toronto Rehab our 
uh, risk factors which we are facing globally. So those risk factors, number one, I think we all know, number one risk factor is physical inactivity. We almost, you know, half of the world is like a potato couch. So <laughs> second is nutrition. We are all like on the go, whatever we want, we can just have it. And especially our younger population, uh, eyebrows were raised when we uh, started observing that even children, newborn, are born with the atherosclerotic changes in their vessels. So that's quite worrisome. So number two risk factor is physical, is nutrition. Number three, stress. I think uh, professor before me has highlighted this uh, uh, point very uh, uh, clearly and third is smoking then blood pressure your cholesterol your glucose and your waist size so we have all these risk factors which are latest risk factors and we all have to uh, even if we, if we are suffering from two of them then practically we are into a metabolic syndrome so these were the risk factors which were revised according to uh, American and Canadian guidelines of uh, cardiopulmonary rehabilitation. So these are our latest risk factors in which we start working in phase one of cardiac rehab and in phase two. And then you form an individual uh, program of a patient. So keeping in view of all the risk factors and we screen them. Uh, with different screening elements like for stress, for anxiety, for their waste, for their BMI, for their depression. And let me, before I end my talk, the major worry thing and the major stress which was laid last year was were our sleep hours. Uh, this risk factor was not added before, but this risk factor is like an independent risk factor like glucose, cholesterol, uh, any other risk factors, smoking. So sleep now is an independent risk factor, uh, risk factor in cardiovascular health. So that I wanted to add. And uh, with this, thank you so much for your time and uh, for having me in this group. It's, I'm honored to be in this group and I look forward to working with you all and in future so that we can have our cultural uh, friendly cardiopulmonary uh, service which we can offer at every doorstep. Thank you very much and take care and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nabila. Uh, now I would like now like to request Dr. Matila Farooq, all the way from Bangladesh, who has joined us to please address the audience. She is an assistant professor and head department of non-communicable diseases at Bangladesh University of Health Sciences. Dr. Mathila Faruqi. Uh, thank you, Samin Ali. Uh, can you hear me? Thank you. Uh, so, greetings to all of the uh, distinguished participants here from Bangladesh. And uh, I, it's my pleasure to be here as a speaker. I am actually will talk about some uh, cardiovascular disease prevalence and its impact in Bangladesh. Uh, we all know that 71% of the total global deaths in NCD uh, uh, occurs due to NCD in the world and one third is caused by the cardiovascular diseases. Next slide, please. And among these cardiovascular diseases, more than 75% occurs in low and median income countries, about 85% from stroke and heart attack. Uh, next slide. In Bangladesh also, 67% uh, deaths are due to NCDs, whereas 30% deaths are contributed by the cardiovascular diseases alone. Next slide, please. So here in a systematic review of uh, 
at 2018, the weighted pool prevalence of the cardiovascular diseases was 5%, and regardless of the type of CVD and gender, and it was uh, found higher in the urban areas compared to the rural areas in Bangladesh, and actually no such difference observed in terms of gender. And the highest reported prevalence was 21% for heart disease in this study. Next slide. So we actually, everyone who uh, are uh, engaged with the cardiovascular diseases or mental health or other things, and we know the uh, risk factors, uh, main risk factors are smoking, and unhealthy diet and added salt intake physical activity. This is the, actually the last uh, uh, prevalent risk factors in 2018 risk factor survey in Bangladesh, where we can see in the uh, tobacco use in any form in Bangladesh is about 43.7%, and the low vegetable and fruit intake is very high, about 89.6%. Low physical activity, 29%, and dyslipidemia, 28.4%, along with hypertension, 25%. Next slide. And in this uh, survey, we also found that uh, to cause any disease and that for the high risk population, about 71% adult population in Bangladesh has one or two of the risk factors uh, that cause CVD, and 26% adult has more than three risk factors, and 15.5% 40 to 69 years adult population has a CVD risk of more than 30%, that is high risk of CVD development in next 10 years by WHOIS's risk prediction chart. Next slide. So this is the actually, we all know that uh, half of the cardiovascular diseases or more than half is actually contributed by hypertension and the uncontrolled hypertension, obviously. And in Bangladesh, this is the trend of hypertension from 1983 to 2012. And now its suffering rate is 25%. Next slide. Here we can see that our out-of-pocket expenditure is 67% in Bangladesh, and, and 45 million people actually living with hypertension at present with a 20% productivity loss. Next slide. And among these 25%, actually half of the hypertensive adults in Bangladesh are not aware that they have the hypertension. And 75% of them actually taking medication, but only half of them actually taking a medication regularly and are controlled. So in this slide, we can see that in a study, it was found that when that we actually assess that uh, need of drug therapy among the population of the uh, with the cardiovascular total risk approach and the hypertension single risk approach. So when we uh, find out the need of drug therapy with the CVD risk approach combined, we found that is only 0.5% and 1.8%. And when we uh, estimated the risk factor with the hypertension alone, we found the need for drug therapy is 24.6% in Bangladesh. Next slide. No, next slide. It has been double. Okay, so from here, this slide from the same study, we can see that the annual cost of pharmacological uh, treatment or the uh, drug cost can be reduced to one lakh forty-four thousand US dollar if from seven lakh eleven thousand US dollar if we use the total cardiovascular CVD risk approach uh, for the treatment purpose, not the hypertension risk approach alone. So, so next slide. So now it is actually the solution in, uh, should be in our country that we are lacking about the proper regular health monitoring that is the blood pressure measurement and other parameters and always the risk prediction to give the treatment and the ubiquitous access to data. Next slide. By this, we can prevent actually the nine out of 10 strokes and 80% heart attack. Next slide. So here comes actually the strategy for reducing the burden of CVDs in low and middle income countries. We need the effective approaches 
and the cost-effective interventions, including the early detection of cardiovascular diseases through inexpensive technology, non-pharmacological and pharmacological approaches for the modification of CVT risk factors, and the affordable medications for the prevention of heart attack and strokes. For which, next slide, for which actually the way out is the WHO package of uh, essential non-communicable disease intervention, that is a WHO pain intervention for the primary setting and low resource settings. And actually uh, in the primary setting, uh, our people uh, are about uh, 60 to 70 percent people live in the rural area and they can only afford the primary health care services up to that and otherwise they have to refer the secondary and tertiary level and it is the only set of cost effective intervention that has been already trialed in the other South Asian countries like Bhutan and Korea with uh, actually and they have been successful so next slide so it is the minimum standard for the NCDs to strengthen the national capacity to integrate and scale up the care of heart disease, stroke, and the cardiovascular risk. And it, it can reform the primary health care system and the strengthen the health system by uh, capacity building in the primary health care. Next slide. So it is the, we can mitigate the gap between the what is needed and what is actually currently available to reduce the burden and the uh, healthcare cost and the human suffering due to major NCDs by achieving higher coverage of essential intervention through pain intervention. Next. Next, because uh, it will improve the efficiency of care of the major NCDs, it will improve the quality of care and to have a beneficial impact on the health of the people. Next. So next and last slide actually is through the effective implementation of the WHO pain intervention in our country, we can achieve actually the SDG, which is a 25% relative reduction in the risk of premature mortality from the cardiovascular diseases and the prevention of heart attack and stroke by providing treatment and counseling. So equitable financing of the interventions WHO pain can be the step for addressing and prevention of control the cardiovascular diseases and as well as other NCDs within this agenda and thank you all for your patient sharing. Thank you so much Dr. Mathila. I would now like to request Professor Rod Taylor to please address the audience. He's Professor of Population Health Research at, health, uh, at University of Glasgow. Professor Rod Taylor. Thank you, uh, Salah Lakum, and uh, good afternoon from the University of Glasgow in the United Kingdom. You can see uh, our university uh, tower by, behind me. Um, it's a great pleasure to be on this webinar, and I do so, I think, in my context as the co-chief investigator with the chairman of this event, uh, Professor Chowdhury, of the ACROSS collaboration. So what I'd like to talk about in my five minutes is why the cross collaboration and what do we intend to do? So this is our vision. Um, sadly, we haven't talked about it so much so far, but we have an inverse law of health delivery on cardiovascular disease globally. In other words, as we know, the highest levels of cardiovascular disease, sadly, are in certain countries, but unfortunately, their levels of rehabilitation are particularly poor. So if we take Southeast Asia, for instance, Pakistan, India, and Bangladesh, as we've heard, very high rates of cardiovascular disease, but sadly, very little availability of rehabilitation. So the vision of the ACROSS collaboration is to try to improve and ensure that global access to affordable and effective rehabilitation for people with heart disease. Some, as we've heard, will also have a mental health um, overlay such as anxiety and depression. And importantly, to allow them to live longer and healthier lives. Next slide. Now, how are we, how are we doing this? Well, this is a slide, it's a little bit busy, so forgive me, but this tries to just summarize some of the key partnerships that we have brought together over the last 12 months and across. So 
um, my, my own unit in Glasgow, um, together with the University of Manchester, um, led by Professor Hussein, who's on this call, um, together with representation from each of our three countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh and India, and a number of centres who are on this call today and indeed are presenting will be um, participating in the ACROSS study as it goes forward. You may see some of the names of these institutes um, on the slide. And then last but not least, we're blessed with a, a very prestigious international steering committee that has many um, well-known researchers, both in cardiovascular disease and mental health from Canada, Australia, and, and Denmark. Next slide. So what is it that the ACROSS team are wanting to do? Well, one of the particular research questions that we've spent the last six months pursuing is this one. And it's looking at the question of how do we implement a culturally adapted program of home based cardiac rehabilitation. I'll come back to home based rehabilitation in a second. But for people who have either coronary heart disease or heart failure, but also coexisting depression and anxiety. In other words, they have this mental health heart loop that we had our chairman refer to um, at the beginning of this presentation. And what we want to do is to look whether we can implement the service um, and do so in a clinically effective and cost effective in a sustainable way in Bangladesh, India and Pakistan. Next slide. Now again, forgive me, this is a very busy slide. Do, do, um, uh, hopefully you can see some of the images there, but this is just to give you a flavour from some of our publications that we have made in United Kingdom. So these come from various randomized control trials where we have taken home-based cardiac rehabilitation and applied it to populations with coronary heart disease and, and heart failure and looked at the question of, are these interventions effective and cost-effective? And I'm delighted to say the answer to that has been yes. So. We have very good evidence that these interventions appear to work in settings such as UK. But the question is, do these interventions work in settings such as India, Pakistan and Bangladesh? And that's what we want to look at and across. And the reason that we've focused on home-based rehabilitation is, is that we believe this is an accessible means of people accessing rehabilitation, obviously during COVID, particularly important because people can do so safely, both patients and staff. Um, and that is what we want to evaluate. And we're doing it through essentially the following work packages. So our first work package will be looking at taking these interventions, transplanting them, if that's the word, into the setting, culturally adapting them. And two of the interventions we will use are what are called the heart manual and the REACH HF manual that come from our UK Western research but we need to ad apply those to the setting. We then want to check whether these interventions are acceptable and feasible. We will do that through a How pilot study and we will undertake okay. that pilot study um, in each of our three countries. And then we plan to undertake what is uh, a rather ambitious, but I think a very important full randomized control trial of 3,000 patients across our three countries to test um, the impact of these interventions. And then in doing so, and in parallel with all this work, clearly a very important area is to build capacity. Um, not only do we want to show that these interventions work in research, but we want to embed the capacity so that when we move on, um, these interventions will continue to be available to patients and their families um, in Southeast Asia. Next slide. So I will finish up there. Uh, my thank you 
for your attention. This is the ACROSS website. Um, we've just begun to pull this website together. If you'd like to visit the website and find out more about the project, the link is here um, together with our email. And again, thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Rod. Uh, I would now like to request Professor Tahir Sari. If sir, if you could just check your audio and I'll just put up your slides. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'll just I'll just go up to your slides, sir. Just give me a second. Professor Tahir Sari, uh, Sari, Professor yes. of Audiology, Director Clinical Research Department, Director Cardiac Cath Department and Intervention Program. National Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases. So the forum is yours, please. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening to everyone. As an intervention cardiologist, I do have a plan B. So I switch to my mobile. Okay. <laughs> a little bit about the things that a cardiovascular disease poses a major cause of morbidity and mortality world over. Almost 80 to 86 percent of cardiovascular diseases are in the lower and middle income countries. And 37 percent of these deaths are related to cardiovascular diseases. Next. Regarding the uh, scenario in Pakistan, non-communicable diseases are estimated to be around 58 to 60 percent of all deaths and out of these almost 30 percent are due to cardiovascular diseases. If you see in the uh, left side of the uh, panel, uh, please, uh, left side of the panel, you can see the uh, all over the world, the, especially in the western countries, the trend for the cardiovascular diseases are towards uh, lowering down the incidence of death. But in Pakistan, it's little, still high, both in the male and female. Next. Next slide. You can see, this is very alarming. In the middle uh, panel, you can see the almost 37%, uh, 34% uh, of the patients with cardiovascular diseases having uh, the mortality are in the age group of 24, 25 to 64 four years in Pakistan. This is the group that is the bread earner for all of the family and we have a joint family system. So it's very alarming that the, this number is on the rise. Next, and in female, the same pattern is there almost 32% in the uh, 25 to 64 years of age, whereas 64% in the more than 65 years. Next. Next slide. Uh, we, as a part of inter-heart case control study that was conducted in 52 countries world over, there are nine modifiable risk factors for acute MI are being uh, tested. These are the hypertension, diabetes, smoking, abdominal obesity, psychological index, lack of exercise, lack of fruit and vegetable, the ratio between FOB and FOA1 and alcohol consumption. These were tested next. Uh, a few of the estimate about the common among the adult population in Pakistan is that, that these risk factors, the hypertension is almost 41%. The alarming thing is that uh, basically it is underdiagnosed and if it is diagnosed then undertreated the GPs and physicians do not know about the latest recommendation to treat the, uh, adequately treat the uh, uh, hypertension. Please, please, uh, last slide. Please go back. Please, uh, yeah. Tobacco use, especially the smoking and the chewable tobacco and shisha, it's around 21%. Obesity is around 21%. The alarming thing is that the diabetes mellitus in the national uh, survey it around 25 percent, and which is and the alarming thing is that our younger population has more incidence for diabetes. Similarly, stroke is 2.8 percent. Next, 
so the cardiovascular uh, risks are basically commenced early in the life healthy and healthy habits in childhood and adolescence increases the risk of tobacco use high fat and high calorie intake and lack of physical activity so these two should be uh, these uh, risk factors modifiable risk factors should be catered in the younger age group the common risk factors that is, that is smoking and healthy diet lack of physical activity blood pressure and obesity can be addressed at a younger age next so what we have to do we have to do eat the right healthy food that is more fruit more uh, vegetable fresh vegetables and should have an exercise almost 30 to 40 minutes minimum of 5 to 6 days a week these have the benefit for weight control improving diabetes controlling the blood pressure reducing your risk of heart attack and stroke the more important thing is that the person has to uh, know about his uh, bmi and control for his weight the blood pressure should be well maintained well controlled special emphasis should be on do not smoke or chew tobacco the one most important thing as you know that family tendency uh, for obesity and diabetes so you have to be very careful and most important thing if you have some of any of the disease that is hypertension diabetes you should have a regular check up with adequate control i thank you thank you so much professor tahe i would now uh, move towards keeping i'm just uh, cautious of the time also so we'll move towards the question answer session and i would request professor nusrat hussain professor of psychiatry and director of research global mental health university of manchester consultant psychiatrist at lancashire and south uh, cumbria nhs foundation trust to please uh, address the audience so would you like me to take the questions uh, because most of the questions that are on the chat box but one, one minute uh, yes, sir. we'll start with the questions in a minute um, um assalam alaikum and good afternoon uh, uh, rod and matila and uh, thank you very much um, and anybody else who does not understand urdu next few minutes i'll be talking in urdu is yes, uh, to aaj ki jo talk hui hai ye webinar hua hai beta important hai it's jis tarah se hamare chair professor imran choudhry ne baat ki ki ye jo aur professor zainab zade ne usko endorse kiya ye jo dil ka mamla hai ये माइंड और दिल जो है ये अलग नहीं है और ये सेंचुरी से अगर आप पोइट्री भी पढ़े हैं सब पढ़े तो इट इज बीन रेकग्नाइज लेकिन इसके लिए काम इतना हुआ नहीं है इसी के साथ अगर हम थोड़ी सी प्रोफेसर जैनब जाते की एक स्लाइड पे जाए इट वॉज रिटर्न एवरी टू सेकेंड्स वन पर्सन जो कि थर्टी ईयर्स से लेके सेवेंटी ईयर्स का है उसकी डेथ होती है कि अभी मैंने ये सेंटेंस पूरा नहीं किया है और किसी एक की डेथ हो गई है और जो उन्होंने एक और बहुत अच्छी बात की प्रोफेसर जैनब ने कि बहुत सी ये सारी चीजें हैं ये सोशल स्ट्रेस का है कि जी हमने बहुत सुना है बचपन से सुन रहे थे कि जी उसको बड़ा शौक लगा और वो हार्ट अटैक उसको हो गया ये हम सबको पता है लेकिन उन्होंने कहा कि अगर हम किसी की बात सुन भी लें थोड़ी देर तो उससे भी बहुत एडवांटेज होगा लोगों को बेहतर तौर पे मे बी अपनी सिचुएशन सोशल फैक्टर्स वो कंट्रोल कर सकेंगे उसके बाद हम आए प्रोफेसर नबीला सुमरो की टॉक के ऊपर उन्होंने बड़ी अच्छी बात की कि मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी टीम्स हैं और हम पाकिस्तान में पीछे नहीं हैं उनकी जो मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी टीम है वो उसके स्टैंडर्ड्स वो ही हैं जो कनाडा में होंगे यूके में होंगे लेकिन एक चीज में मेरे ख्याल से जो हम पीछे हैं इसके वो सारी नॉलेज आगे तक लोगों को नहीं जा रही है वो हमें इंपॉर्टेंट है कि हम क्या करें फिर उन्होंने बात शुरू की फिजिकल एक्टिविटी की और न्यूट्रिशन की हमारे खुराक की दस इंपॉर्टेंट हम बहुत शौक से नहारी खाते हैं लेकिन एट द सेम टाइम हमको देखना पड़ेगा कि उसकी हेल्थ इम्पैक्ट क्या हो रही है 
उसी को कंटिन्यू किया प्रोफेसर मतीला ने कि जो चीजें पाकिस्तान में और बांग्लादेश में ज्यादा फर्क नहीं है और उसको हमें देखना पड़ेगा हमें करना पड़ेगा कि एक ये साइन ऑफ प्रोस्पेरिटी था ना कि जी जरा वजन ज्यादा है और तो हमें उसको देखना पड़ेगा कि हमारा वजन ज्यादा नहीं होना चाहिए और उस उन्होंने जो शुरू की प्रोफेसर मतीला ने बात जो शुरू की अबाउट दिस के ये प्रिवेंटेबल कॉजेस हैं ज्यादातर वो फिर बात इन्होंने कंटिन्यू की प्रोफेसर ताहिर सगीर ने और ये अगर हम बात कर रहे हैं कि वन परसेंट डाइज एवरी टू सेकेंड सो एट द सेम टाइम ये कि ये मॉडिफाइबल है ये हम पे डिपेंड करता है कि हम अपने आप को कैसे बेहतर सेहत में रखें ये हमारी नेशनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है ये हमारी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टूवर्ड्स आर फैमिली है टूवर्ड्स आर कम्युनिटी है अगर हम सेहतमंद नहीं है तो इन्होंने कॉस्ट बताई थी इन्होंने मतीला ने कि कितनी कॉस्ट आ रही है बांग्लादेश में सो so, हमें अपनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी पर्सनल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेनी पड़ेगी प्रोग्राम्स ऐसे आएंगे इनशाला फिर हमारे पास प्रोफेसर रॉड टेलर ने बात की अबाउट दी अक्रॉस प्रोग्राम माशाल्लाह हमको इस प्रोजेक्ट को फंड हुआ था कोई टेन थाउजेंड पाउंड जिसपे हमने कुछ काम शुरू किया है पाकिस्तान में और वो काम आगे बढ़ना चाहिए हमारे साथ लोग कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट लेड बाय पीपल लाइक प्रोफेसर ताहिर सगीर एंड अदर डिसिप्लिन लाइक प्रोफेसर नबीला सुमरो हैज एक्सटेंडेड एक्सेप्शनल सपोर्ट लेकिन आई विल कम बैक टू कि जी ये हमारी इट हैज टू बी एवरीबडीज बिजनेस हमें अपने से शुरू करना पड़ेगा आज हमारे हंड्रेड से ज्यादा लोग मौजूद हैं हमें पता करना पड़ेगा कि हमारा बी क्या है हमें पता करना पड़ेगा कि चाहे हम पंद्रह साल के हैं बीस साल के हैं कि हमारा ब्लड प्रेशर क्या है और हमें वी नीड टू मेक श्योर कि अराउंड आर फैमिलीज उनके ब्लड प्रेशर्स हमको पता है कि नहीं पता है हमें अपना रोल करना पड़ेगा कि हमारे खाने न्यूट्रिशन की होनी चाहिए और एक रिसर्च हुई है पाकिस्तान में जो उन्होंने कहा कि ये नहीं है कि हमें खाना कम मिलता है हमें खाना जो लेकिन हम खाते हैं हम उसकी इतना उसमें न्यूट्रिएंट्स और हेल्थी फूड नहीं होता तो ठीक है हम मैं बार बार ये कहता हूं कि हम लोअर इनकम कंट्री नहीं है पाकिस्तान हम लोअर मिडिल इनकम कंट्री हैं एंड देन वी मेक नीड टू मेक श्योर कि हम सब की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज में कि हाउ डू वी गो टूवर्ड्स अ हेल्थियर नेशन बोथ फिजिकली मेंटली ओवरऑल वेलबींग में तो वी हैव गॉट टू थ्री मिनट्स विल टेक वन और टू थ्री क्वेश्चन it would be good to have uh, agar uh, sameen can uh, take it over about questions and thank okay. you very much all the speakers brilliant talks great thank you very much so there are several questions but most of them have already been answered by professor rod in the chat um, there are some thank you notes also um i'll just see if there's any question which has not been addressed because most of them have been already been addressed by professor rod theek hai ah yes sir uh, they have been addressed by professor rod in writing yeah. so if that's right samin what yes, one of one of the interesting questions that has come up for us and i would be interested to hear what you think yourselves is this question of how we not only provide rehabilitation for people who might be in the cities who perhaps can reach into their pockets easily but those who are in more rural settings who may be more challenged particularly in terms of their out of pocket expenses i'd be interested to hear about your experience with previous projects with these people and how we might um maximize our efforts and across to help everyone and not just those who may be more wealthy and based in cities i i would use uh, an example of uh, uh, a learning through play programs which is focused on maternal depression uh, one of the i think i noticed on low birth weight uh, one of the top causes of death in 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 pakistan and that is addressed on maternal depression 
So we work with the low income, low resource setting, the outreach is, and uh, it is a, a town called Gadab town in Karachi. It's, it's semi urban and it covers half is rural areas, half is, you know, transition to urban areas. We are working very closely with them. So the outreach teams are there and with regard to, uh, and it is now going towards that it would be offered in routine care. We have also made this transition to digital, that the assessments and, and interventions are being delivered remotely. And I think the whole across program with regard to um, uh, cardiovascular health, I think would be a great program on, on, on the platform of which we can do that because it involves task shifting as well. So, so that is another thing, how we can utilize the people who are working at the front line, like our maternal depression one is being delivered by community health workers. So I hope that answers the question. Matila, you had put something in uh, in the chat. Can, can you say something about Bangladesh? You're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, actually, here are some questions that are asked of why uh, CVD is more in the LMICs and what is the reasons how we can address that and very interesting questions. And so we know actually lots of reasons of these cardiovascular diseases occurring more in the LMIC. And uh, one of the main reason is actually still in the Pakistan, Bangladesh and other LMICs, I, I think that the, uh, the main service is uh, centered, uh, located at the uh, city area and the urban area, especially the intervention cardiologists and the emergency treatment. And in the rural area, as per in Bangladesh, we have about uh, 67 to 8 percent people live in rural area, only they have the reach to the sub district level. And that subsisted level healthcare facilities are actually not so developed or not so facilities for the uh, treatment of the certain uh, heart failure or certain uh, heart attacks. And they have they only get the uh, emergency treatment there and they have to refer to the secondary level. And by this time, actually, uh, number one, the pe people are not aware. Uh, they already uh, become late to go to the uh, sub-district level center. And also with this the, uh, lack of resources, we are getting more late to give the uh, emergency and the correct treatment at the right time. So it is one of the reason uh, actually uh, that uh, uh, we are actually having more cardiovascular uh, deaths and uh, moreover in uh, the uh, professor Tahir also showed that uh, it is actually increasing in the uh, early adult to middle age adult people and so uh, on in the Bangladesh also and because of the we all know that mainly because of this uh, behavioral attitude and healthy lifestyle and healthy pattern and I think we are doing our job and we are trying, but we have to be more uh, uh, capacity building stays and more awareness stays for people to have the healthy diet and uh, to take the hypertension drugs regularly and not to discontinue and go on. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much to all the speakers. Thank you very much for all the participants. I, I audience. just wanted to add one more sentence that is we just uh, add this at primary level at school health service and I think everybody now has an app on the phone and if we can just through that media we can have an app for cardiac rehab or cardiac health. I think every I have noted that people even if they don't have to eat but they have a cell phone in their hand. Great so, you know, suggestion. Those resources yeah. can be tapped from school and from uh, we, can, we, we would uh, continue yeah, continuation of this, we should have another session on digital cardiac rehabilitation. Yes, so we, we should organize that. Thank you very much, all. Bye-bye. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, Sameen. Thank you. 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 Thank